Hey everybody, Mr. Stewart here, your favorite Project Lead the Way teacher, and today we're going to talk about beam analysis and why we do uh, beam analysis. So a beam is a structural member that carries a load that's applied transverse to its length. Beams are used in floors and roofs, and they can be called floor joists, they can be called stringers, they can be called floor beams or girders. Civil and engineers uh, and structural engineers do what is called chasing the load. And the loads are initially applied to a building, which would be like the roof or a floor in a building. And then the weight of the loads are transferred to beams which then transfers the loads to another building component, typically the uh, vertical components in a structure. So beams have to be in what's called static equilibrium. And that is the state of an object in which the forces that are applied to it counteract each other so that the object remains stationary. So if you have forces pushing down on a beam like this box that's in in this graphic here um, there's also going to need to be forces equal forces pu pushing up on the beam uh, same thing with side to side movement from uh, left to right and also twisting motion like we see with these green arrows the loads or forces applied to a beam from the roof or floor have to be resisted from by forces from the beam supports. The resisting forces are called reaction forces. Note that forces are often referred to as vectors because they have a magnitude and a direction. Reaction forces can be linear or rotational. A linear reaction is often called a shear reaction, and those are denoted with an F or an R. And a rotational reaction is called a moment reaction, and that is denoted with a letter M. The reaction forces have to balance the applied forces. So these are different kinds of beam supports, and the method uh, of support dictates the types of reaction forces from uh, supporting members. So there's three different kinds of supports here. There's also three different types of beams. The top is a simple beam. Uh, the second one down is continuous beam. You can see the forces are uh, applied by the arrows and they're pointing straight up and there's multiple forces pushing straight up on that beam. And then you have cantilevered forces or beam types, which are uh, beams that are only supported at one end. We also have uh, fixed beams, which are uh, held in place at two ends. A uh, propped beam, which is fixed at one end and then supported at the other. And then we have an overhanging beam uh, which you can see in the lower picture there, has the force on the right-hand side pushing up, and then the beam extends past that force. These are simple beams that we're going to be talking about. And in a simple beam, you're going to have an applied load pushing down. And our top graphic there is a beam diagram and then the lower graphic is what's called a free body diagram and it's it's somewhat similar to the beam diagram uh, but in the free body diagram you're actually showing where the forces are being applied to your uh, beam I'm going to summarize this slide, but basically what it says that the sum of all forces in a beam have to be equal to zero. So vertical forces, horizontal forces, 
and any kind of rotational force has to be equal to uh, zero. So that keeps a beam in place. A moment is created when a force tends to rotate an object and the magnitude of the moment is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance of the force and that's called the moment arm. So there's our force coming down and we have rotational force and that gives us our, uh, our moment. This is an example from uh, the prior unit of how, how to calculate um, beam forces and such. That's a beam diagram and here is the same beam and this is a free body diagram. Um, to calculate reaction forces, we're going to use the equilibrium equations to find the magnitude of the reaction forces. So we have horizontal forces, and in horizontal forces, you assume that a positive value is pointing to the right. Vertical forces assume that a positive uh, force is pointing up. Now a moment, and in moments, that which is rotation, a positive value is uh, rotating counterclockwise. We're going to do uh, similar calculations with our beams, um, but we're going to use uh, a slightly uh, s more easy to understand method and that will be showing in uh, following videos. These are our moment diagrams and shear diagrams. You'll be seeing how to create those uh, pretty easily in another video. And this is, this is uh, what one of them looks like when we run it through a program called MD Solids. So you're gonna need to look at the next videos to see how to calculate the beam forces and also how to create the charts and graphs.